This is Filming with Josh. Brought to you by Rustic River Media. Welcome to the videographer's home for tips, tricks, and how to make flicks. Hey guys, I'm Josh Milligan with Rustic River Media and today I want to break down my Sony FX6 how I use it, how I have it set up, and what I use it for. Uh, full disclaimer, as I always say in my videos and podcasts, I am doing this from my home office, so you may or may not, or probably will, hear my two-year-old and six-month-old at some point, but it is what it is. Without further ado, I wanna break down my FX6, how I use it, and what I use it for. I've been a Sony shooter for over a decade, more like 12, 13 years, and uh, I came from the FS7 and FS7 Mark II, and when the FX6 came out, I managed to get my hands on one there goes my two-year-old right there. I managed to get my hands on one right after it came out. Um, so I've had my FX6 for this spring will be uh, three years. And I love this camera. It is much better than my FS7 and FS7 II were. Uh, I like the, the form factor much better uh, for, for the type of work that I do. And I love the image. It's a huge upgrade over the FS7 images. Um, and then I love the fact that Sony came out with the FX3, which I'm using to film this on. And to me, the FX6 and FX3 make for an amazing A cam, B cam combination. I also have two Sony A1s that I use for photo work or as C cams, but most of the heavy lifting is going to be the FX6 with the FX3 as my B cam. So in saying that, I don't ever really take my FX6 apart. I kind of leave it built up for the most part because I'm never going to put this on a gimbal or a slider or a drone or anything like that. That's what I have the FX3 for. Um, so this is only going to pretty much be used either on sticks or handheld or on an easy rig. So I pretty much always leave mine built up. I only take it apart when I'm flying, and even then, I don't have to take it completely apart, I just have to take a few things off, like the grip, the monitor, and the V-mount battery. Other than that, I can pretty much leave it built up and fly it in my uh, Think Tank Video uh, 18 roller bag um, with, without having to really take anything else off. So this, how you see it, is pretty much how I run it all the time. Um, and I love that. And so I do a lot of commercial work, corporate work, I do some doc work, some reality TV work. I do a lot of live stream events. Um, and then I also do some passion projects in the fly fishing uh, world because I love to fly fish. So commercial, corporate, um, a lot of event coverage, live streaming, uh, some doc work, some reality TV, and fly fishing content because I just enjoy it. That's the type of work that I do. So that's what I have mine configured for. So we'll start with the base plate, which I have mounted to my Sockler FSB-10 fluid head on these Flowtech 100 sticks, huge fan of Sockler. I've got an FSB-8 as well that I use for the FX3, but I love putting this on the FSB-10 and with the Flowtech 100 sticks. I think it's a great combo. Some people might think the FSB-10 is overkill for the FX6. Uh, I don't because if you're going to put a big heavy lens on this, like a big cinema lens or a really long lens like a 200 to 600, having the 100 millimeter bowl, I think, goes a long way. I'm a huge fan of having too much tripod rather than not enough. But you'll notice, let me lock my tripod down here, I have this base plate by a company called Mid-49. Now Mid-49 was started by the same people who started Wooden Camera. The guy who started Wooden Camera sold it, at least I believe he did, I don't want to be incorrect on that, but I believe he sold it, eventually left the company and started Mid-49. Mid-49 is relatively new, just launched like this past year. Mid-49 is based out of Texas, just like Wooden Camera originally was. I'm also based out of Texas, so I love that. But they make a great base plate. And I, I man, I searched high and far for the best base plate uh, for the past two, three years. And it wasn't until mid-49 came out with this this year that I finally found the perfect base plate, plate for, for the work that I do. But essentially what you have right here, I'll unlock it again, is you have this plate that sits on top of the tripod. So I have a um, basically the, the, the Sockler original um, tripod plate on the bottom of my FSB-10. And this is like a standard Manfrotto plate. But bolted to that is the mid-49 um, base plate. And the mid-49 base plate, what it allows you to do, let me lock this back down here, is it allows you to run rails at the standard height. So it, they make these for other cameras beyond the FX6, but for the FX6 version, it allows me to run rails at the standard height. So if I wanted to run a matte box as a, uh, a clamp-on style, it would be the correct height. And then it also allows me to run uh, rails for lens support, which you'll see right here. I run a 100 to 400 uh, G Master lens a lot for some wildlife filming I do, and I love bolting this lens 
support into the 100 to 400. I've had this lens support for, gosh, seven, eight years. It's my wooden camera. And I like it a lot. I never move it. It literally stays right here all the time. So anytime I put my 100 to 400 on, all I have to do is, it's kind of hard to do this when I'm not looking at it, <laughs> but all I have to do is loosen this, pop the support up and bolt it into the bottom of the lens and then lock it back down. And since it's the only lens that I ever really need lens support for with the lenses that I run, I never have to move it. So it always stays here. I just slide it up, bolt it in, lock it down. And then when I take the lens off, just unlock it, loosen it, and then take the lens back off, which I really, really like. None of my other lenses, even my 70 to 200 doesn't need lens support, I don't think, because it's so light. And I, I don't find that I get a lot of shake or anything or vibration on the 70 to 200. G, it's the G Master version too. It's so lightweight. I, I just never really feel the need to support it. But the 100 to 400 I do, partially because of the weight of it hanging off the front of the lens mount, but also partially because I don't want to get a lot of vibrations. If you bolt, I've found over the years that if you actually bolt your long glass, like a 400 mil or 200 to 600, to your camera, rather than just simply support it with a Y bracket, you'll get a much stronger uh, connection, which will eliminate a lot of micro jitters. Used to when I would just lay a 100-400 into a um, lens support that had the Y bracket, there would still be these micro jitters. But once I started bolting it to the lens, those went away. So I can run a 100-400 on my FX6 on this 100 millimeter fluid head, and I can pull focus by hand and not have any any shake at all whatsoever. I meet a lot of camera operators who just think that with long glass you just have shake, but that doesn't have to be the case. With the right fluid head tripod combination and great lens support, especially if you bolt it on, you can eliminate those micro jitters. So I don't ever have shake in my 100 to 400 millimeter footage, and that's because I bolt it on. And all of that is because I run these lens support rails into the base plate system. Now, another thing, I mentioned that I never take this off, and I never have to because I don't use a follow focus wheel very often. I have one. I have a zip focus by wooden camera, but I rarely use it. I just pull by hand or use the autofocus a lot in my work. Um, I like pulling by hand I, just for the work that I do. I, I find it to be simple enough. And my matte box, which I have right here, is a wooden camera zip box pro, so I never really need to bolt it on. I have the ability to bolt this on. I have the, the pieces allow me to bolt the wooden camera matte box to the, the uh, rails, but I, I just clamp it on to be honest because it works so well on this camera. I have it flipped upside down right here as you can kind of see. I have it, I have the bracket flipped upside down so that the locking part of the clamp on uh, ring is on the bottom part of the matte box, but this allows me, I can clamp it onto any of my lenses and not need lens support or uh, excuse me, not need rails, which I really like because I can add it real fast, take it off real fast, and run it stripped down without having to have the whole plate, base plate, which is key to what I'm about to say about this mid-49 plate. But I really like the wooden camera Zipbox Pros. I have two of these, they're super lightweight, and uh, this is a four-stage matte box. I, I can put three filters up front and then run a circular filter in the back, so really cool design by wooden camera, but that's why I never have to move my rails and why I can leave my lens support on all the time because I, I use a clamp-on style matte box and I don't use a follow focus wheel. So for me, I'm pulling by hand, I'm using autofocus, and I'm only really using rails for lens support. So this just kind of stays on. But back to the mid 49 plate, what's really cool is if I want to take everything, the rails with the lens support, maybe I've got the 100 to 400 bolted to my camera system, I can come down here and I could just take it all off of the tripod and take the whole tripod plate off. But instead, the way Mid-49 has it designed is they've got this cool little clamping ring and you can pull everything off. And below you have a standard like, airy dovetail. And this one is actually made by Mid-49 and it comes in the kit with this base plate system. But essentially I can pop the FX6 off and take the rails and everything with me. So if I had this bolted in my 100-400, boop, I can just pop the whole thing off and leave just the airy dovetail. The other option, and it you use this little mount right here where you push it in, you pop it off, it stays kind of cocked, and then you just basically uh, pop it back on like that and lock it down, and now you're back up and rolling. The other option, though, is on the opposite side. Again, it's kind of hard to do this when I'm filming myself, but on the opposite side is an Arca Swiss receiver. So I can pull the camera off and have an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom and leave the rails and the lens support behind. 
Most of the time, this is how I run the camera. Since I don't need the rails for map box or for follow focus, I only really need them for lens support. And again, the only lens I typically ever need to support is the 100 to 400. So the only time I need to take this system off my tripod is when I have the 100 to 400 on. Otherwise, I just take the camera off like this and leave this on the tripod. In fact, my tripod, this pretty much always is like this. I never take this off unless I got the 100 400 on. But what's cool is my FX3 that I'm filming this on and both of my A1s are all Arca Swiss mounted. So everything I have has Arca Swiss plates. My FSB8 uh, uh, fluid head for my other Sockler tripod system has a Arca Swiss receiver. My gimbal, my motorized slider, my jib, everything is Arca Swiss. So I could take this FX6 off and throw an A1 on here or an FX3 and get a time lapse or another B cam shot with a different camera that has a different lens set up because they all still work in this system. So really cool system by Mid49. Wooden camera actually has a similar product, but the problem with wooden cameras is um, you, there's not all Arca Swiss plates can fit in their receiver. So they have a proprietary Arca Swiss plate, which is so stupid. I, I tried the wooden camera one out years ago and because they make it for like the Canon C series, the Sony FX uh, series, as well as the FS series. I had it for the FS7 back in the day, as well as a whole host of other cameras, just like Mid49 does. But the problem was, is that their Arca Swiss receiver only worked with their Arca Swiss plates. So I, I could take the camera and run it just like what I explained right here, but I couldn't put an A1 or an FX3 on the same tripod which is really frustrating because sometimes I'll have another camera in my backpack and I might want to pop this off and pop that camera on for like a time lapse or something on the same set of sticks I have on me. And I couldn't do that with wooden camera because they had this proprietary Arca Swiss plate. You don't have the problem with mid 49. It works with any Arca Swiss plate. So I really, really, really like this system a lot. It's really sturdy. I can take this and throw this tripod over my shoulder, hang the camera with the long lens off of the tripod and never have to worry about it coming off. It's extremely sturdy. I hike everywhere like I hike I've literally taken this camera in the mountains and hiked you know doing dock work with the tripod over my shoulder and the camera hanging off the back and nothing's ever going anywhere it's just a great system so the base everything starts with this base plate right here which I really really like from there I want to jump to the top plate so this top plate is made by bright tangerine what I like about it is one it's extremely lightweight two it gives you a bunch of three quarter or, or excuse me three eighth or quarter 20 holes but the biggest advantage of the Bright Tangerine top plate is this bracket right here. See, with the Bright Tangerine top plate, you can bolt on this bracket. It only works with Bright Tangerine accessories, but this bracket can bolt up here into this other Bright Tangerine NATO rail. So this whole system from the top plate to this mounting bracket to this NATO rail up here is all Bright Tangerine. Now, Bright Tangerine makes for this NATO rail a whole system that allows you to run your standard stock monitor um, on a stronger 15 millimeter rail mount that can hold an, uh, a viewfinder loop. I don't use an LCD loop anymore. When I ran the uh, FS7 cameras I did because I filmed from the shoulders with those cameras a lot, I don't film from the shoulder with this camera. I have the ability to use a shoulder rig on this camera and I've literally in three years of owning this camera have never once used it. I always shoot handheld or sticks or on an easy rig. That's how I like to work. So I don't need the stock monitor configuration because I don't need an LCD loop. I like to run external five inch monitors. So for me, I don't use that piece, but if you're someone who wants to use the original stock monitor and use an LCD loop, that's what this NATO rail system allows you to do. But the big thing about it is, is this NATO rail right here allows you to run, again, an LCD loop because it makes the FX6 mount stronger, but you can also run an external monitor, which I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And then more importantly, because it's bolted into the handle right here, the NATO rail is, you can bolt this bracket from the, the NATO rail into the top handle. And why this is so important is it gives the top handle an, a ton of strength. Several years ago, when I first got this camera, I was shooting a project for the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. It was a commercial project for them. And I'll never forget, I was walking around campus and I was holding the FX6. This is before I had any of this. And I had the stock top handle, just like, like I have it right here. And I noticed that these thumb screws came loose and the handle almost came off and I almost lost the camera. 
And it's because over time, even when I bolted these down with an Allen wrench, they kind of wiggled loose. So with the top plate and this bracket bolting into the natal rail, it gives it a ton of strength. And I have not in three years had to retighten any of these screws. And I've checked them occasionally just to see if they moved and they'd never moved. These, this whole system is bolted down so securely that if someone broke in my house, I often joke like this with my camera operator friends, if someone broke in my house, I could take my camera FX6 by the top handle and probably <laughs> beat the intruder to death with this configuration simply because it's so strong. You could take it and hit a tree and it's not gonna come off because it's all bolted together with this bracket. Whereas before, you're just kind of hinged, like putting everything on, on these two little thumb screws, which I found wiggle loose over time. So this to me is clutch and Bright Tangerine, as far as I'm aware, is the only company that offers a bracket like this and it's only compatible with their products. So this is a really, really great system. And then again, allows me to run an external monitor. So um, I liked where the stock monitor goes on this camera. Um, I, I, this is how I like to run it. To me, it's very natural to have it on this side of the camera as a solo camera operator because I, I don't have a, I don't have someone pulling focus for me on set typically. Like I'm, I'm going to be operating the camera or, or another camera operator is going to operate the camera for me and we're going to be pulling our focus ourselves. So for me, I like to have the monitor on the operator side of the camera. I don't, I see a lot of configurations online where the monitor's way up here. And to me, that's uncomfortable. It's really high. You're making the camera very top heavy, which is gonna help you have not very stable footage. To have better handheld footage, you really kind of need everything to be more compact, lower center of gravity. And so I really like the stock configuration with having the monitor on the side of the camera operator. But what I found, and you'll notice online, I, I did a post on several Sony groups like a year or two ago kind of explaining how this works. And I've noticed other people are starting to take on. But what I found is if I, I bought this piece from Wooden Camera, and I don't know how hard it is, easy it is to see right here, but this piece, this little NATO rail piece is a monitor mount specifically made for bolting into small HD monitors, which have, small HD monitors have a, a it's a form of a quarter 20 uh, locking pen mount, but it's not standard airy locking mount. It's proprietary to uh, small HD, but Wooden Camera makes this little 15 millimeter rail that can bolt into this small HD mount. And what that allows me to do is it, it's like a spud and this spud allows me to run it, run a, the monitor into the NATO rail of the Bright Tangerine NATO rail system. So I can run, you can see it's kind of dirty because I've had this on here for so long. But what it allows me to do is I can take this whole system right here with this little spud, um, why wooden camera and this little small HD bracket. Uh, this is an aftermarket bracket. I'll put a link to it in the description on the on the, the post of this video. But this little offset bracket I bought, I bought it because it allowed me to, to, to put the monitor up a little higher, which allowed me to access the SD card slot for putting on LUTs and things. But this offset bracket with the wood, which is has the proprietary small HD mount and this spud by wooden camera allows me to run everything into the NATO rail and what's even cooler is if you set the tension just right, you don't have to unlock anything. You can still use this as a tension-based monitor, kind of like the stock monitor would be. So I could spin this all the way around if I wanted to and film myself or spin it around and, and film clients. Of course, you can make the tension however tent you want it to be. But I love that about this system. So I can run the, the monitor right here off the edge of the camera. I don't have to tighten things or loosen things. It's It's got a perfect, um, like it's not, uh, it's perfectly level. It's just a great way to run it. And the monitor I, I specifically cho chose to run on this system is the Small HD Cine 5. I'm a huge Small HD fan. I like their tools the best. I love the, they were one of the original companies to uh, incorporate the new EL zone um, way of monitoring exposure, which I think is a much better than the older style of false colors, traditional false colors. And so Small HD was one of the original monitor companies to uh, allow EL zone into an external monitor. Um, they have a lot of other great tools. Of course, their image is spectacular and they don't draw a lot of power which is huge, and I'm gonna to get to that in a minute, but they sip on power compared to something like an Atomos. A lot of people run the Atomos Ninjas on these cameras and they record externally, which just zips those things, man. They freaking zip through power. One of the beautiful things about this camera is how, 
how little of a power draw it has. So you can run this camera for forever. And so this monitor, because it has a, a, it also has a low power draw, I can power this whole system for a very long time. So I love the small HD image, the tools, and the low power draw. And so I run the Cine 5 on this monitor, and I run everything via SDI, and I power it via two-pin Limo to DTAP, which is important. Before I move on to that, I'll also mention right here I have uh, a wooden, or excuse me, a tentacle sink, and I actually have it Velcroed to one of the battery slots. It fits perfectly in a battery slot on the monitor and allows me to run a tentacle sink kind of hidden behind the monitor so that, sorry, my camera fell, or my computer fell asleep, it allows me to run this so that I can always have a tentacle sink on my camera all the time. Um, I, I run time code on every single camera I have as well as my sound recorder, so um, this is just a kind of a neat place to to tuck a tentacle sink. Now, if you look, I have these cables, they're all ran and they're zip tied together. Cause again, I don't have to take much of this. I don't really have to take a whole lot of this camera part even when I fly, but they're kind of zip tied together. I have them tucked neatly right here and they run straight down the back through these little cable holders that you can buy online. These are quarter 20 cable holders and they run right down here to the back of the camera, which is what we're gonna get to next. So on the back of the camera, you'll notice I run a V-mount plate by Wooden Camera. And this V-mount system bolts into the camera body directly so it's not hanging off of, like some, some of them for the FX6 or FX9, they actually hang inside the battery tray. This is not, that. this is a stronger build in my opinion. Um, and I have it thread locked in. I never take it out. Again, I never take my camera apart. So the V-mount never comes off the camera ever. But what it allows me to do with this system, let me take this battery out, is you have a whole bunch of DTAP ports. Now you'll notice I'm not using any of them. And the reason why is because I have a battery, a BPU battery in the camera made uh, by SWIT. Now these are the newer SWIT batteries. SWIT took their older ones off the market and I had their older ones from FS7. They remade them uh, and came out with a newer version. And these newer versions are supposed to work better with the FX cameras. And what I love about the this particular battery by SWIT is that it has a DTAP port on the bottom. And the reason why that's clutch is if it's on the bottom, it allows me to be able to alt to run the BPU battery with the pl DTAP plug, it plugged in all the time, and have this uh, V-mount plate by wooden camera be straight up and down. If the DTAP port on the back of the battery would be like in the center of the battery, I wouldn't be able to put this down all the way. It would be sticking out like that, which would be kind of uncomfortable. I like it to be straight up and down, which is very neat and tidy. And you might be asking, well, if you, what's the point of having a V-mount battery with DTAP ports or a battery tray with DTAP ports if you're not gonna use the DTAP ports? Well, the reason is I don't always wanna run a V-mount battery. Sometimes I wanna run a lightweight system without any battery on the back. And maybe adding a battery on the back with a small lightweight prime on the front, something like a 2414 or 3514G Master Prime, which are really light, it could make it back heavy. So I can take the battery off and still power the camera and the monitor because the monitor has got a two pin limo to DTAP, which is plugged right here on this with battery in the back. So the monitor and camera are completely independent from the V-mount battery, meaning I can run this system completely on its own without ever needing the V-mount. And these are BPU 90 series batteries. So they last a long time. I can power the FX6. I know this question is gonna come up, so go ahead and answer it now. I can power the FX6 and the small HD Cine 5 for like three or four hours. And that's at max brightness, which is fantastic. So I can run this camera with this monitor for a very long time. And with two of these BPUs, I can get through most shoots in a day, three tops. I, I don't know if I've ever burned through three in a day. I don't think I ever have. And I do a lot of 10, 12, 12 hour shoot days. So this is a great setup for being super lightweight. But if I'm doing something like a live stream or a big event where I wanna add a, a more power and maybe I, I can't run anything off of mains power for cabling ish reasons, I can then at that point take a V-mount and then pop it in the back. So maybe I wanna run this particular lens right here, which is a 24 to 70 uh, version two GM. Maybe I wanna run this lens and I wanna run it on an easy rig where I'd bolt the easy rig uh, quick adapter piece right to the top of the handle, which again, you can do because the handle's bolted to the top plate, so it adds so much strength that I can run the easy rig right off the top handle with no problems. So if I wanted to run the easy rig on the top handle, if I didn't have a V-mount in the back, it would actually be front heavy, and so you'd be using your hand and the grip to kind of 
hold the camera balanced all day. Well, I don't have that issue because when I go into the easy rig and I need a properly balanced camera, I just take the V-mount and pop it in the back and now my camera's balanced. And these are the uh, 50 series uh, V-mounts by uh, small, uh, small Rig. I really like these because you can charge them via USB-C and they charge really fast via USB-C. So I don't have to carry a specialized V-mount um, or, or D-tap cables or anything like that to charge these. I can literally just charge them with any USB-C charger I have, which I have a billion of those uh, on hand all the time. So they charge via USB-C and they can power other things via USB-C. So many times I've been on shoots where I needed to power my MacBook Pro or my iPad or something, my cell phone dies or whatever, I can use this uh, to charge any of my um, accessories if I needed to. I've even used these to add some extra juice to my drone before. Um, and I use, the, I use the 99 series batteries on my FX3, which I'm using right now. And then I also have their new Pro version right here. This has uh, got a metal build and an ev it's got two USB-C ports and even faster charging. Uh, and this is their new 99 Pro. I've got a couple of these. And so what's really cool is because this system's so independent and it's so on its own, it can power the camera and the monitor for, like I said, like three to four hours. But then I can take this little 50 watt battery, slide it in the back, and I've just increased the battery life by 50%. Or I could take the 99 series battery and pop it in the back. And now I've increased the battery life by 100%, doubling the battery life of this camera system. And with this bigger battery, I could run an even heavier lens up front and still maintain proper balance. And this is a this is my go-to setup for heavier lens if I'm renting cinema glass, like heavy cinema glass for a project, or if I'm doing like a live stream event and I just need to power the camera all day. This system with this battery, I could probably power this through a live stream for anywhere from like seven to eight hours, which is fantastic. So, and again, it's all independent. So if I wanna go lightweight again, I pop this off and now everything is lightweight and I can still power the camera monitor on its own. Plus, I still have all these three DTAP ports open. So if I had, uh, if I was shooting for freelancing, for example, for another production company and they wanted me to run something like a Teradek, I could bolt the Teradek to the camera and have plenty of DTAP options to power it. Um, so it just gives me lots of options for uh, things like that down the road, rental items and stuff if I needed to use that. So that's what this setup is for. Now you'll notice on this side that I do run the stock grip. I like the stock grip a lot. And I run a so I, I run um, the Sony Gen 4. I have some Gen 3 and Gen 4s, but most of them are Gen 4 uh, transmitters and receivers. So I have this actually Velcroed to the side of my camera body with industrial strength Velcro and I never take it off. I, ne I literally never take it off. It has been on here pretty much since I bought the camera. Um, and, it, and I did this with my FS7, FS7 Mark II and it's great because I can always have one wireless channel always hooked up to my camera at all times. Um, and I never have to take it off. So if I ever just want to throw a wireless mic on someone, I, I've always got a receiver hand, handy. But I also run the stock mount the stock handle I mean because of the hot shoe adapter and I love that what that allows me to do is pop these little protectors off I can run a dual wireless receiver slide it straight into the hot shoe bolt it down and now I've got four channels of audio the shotgun mic the single receiver and a dual receiver up top and if I needed to add another wireless channel, let's say I was doing a dock project and we didn't have a location sound recordist and I was having to record everything in camera, I could even take my shotgun mic off, throw another wireless receiver on one of these cold shoes on the back and now have um, four wireless channels if I wanted, um, which is fantastic. So I love that. And the one cool thing about the hot shoe is with the Gen 4 wireless receivers, you have the option to make this digital over analog so there's less compression happening when the wireless transmission is happening because the wireless signal is compressed to make it easier to send. Um, but when you have a digital setup like this, it's, it's, there's still some compression happening on one end, but it's less compressed on the other. So you have, a, uh, in theory, you could have a little bit better audio. I don't know that the, the, the difference is significant, but you can run it in digital and slightly improve your audio uh, on the receiver side. Uh, plus, with the Gen 4s, you can monitor. I keep all of my info on my screen, on my monitor, and I can, with these uh, Gen 4 mics, um, see actually see the reception of my receivers uh, right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but it says like W1, W2. Let me do the 
execute that. So on W1, W2 right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that would be the signal strength. It actually shows you it with these Gen 4 receivers right there on the monitor, which is really, really cool. Uh, so I can actually see the reception of these right there. Uh, of course, I don't have any transmitters turned on right now, so you're not going to see that, but you can at least see where it would be. Um, and the receiver is powered by the camera's hot shoe. Um, so, and, and I don't find that it takes all that much battery away from the camera, so I, I don't even have to put batteries in this. Now I do on this one because this one is, ba is, is, is ran via analog through the XLR cable, so it does have to have batteries, but I use the uh, AnyLoop Pros and they last for forever. Um, so anyway, that's what this system is. Um, I really like this setup right here for allowing me to run a lightweight camera with long, long, long battery and up to four channels of audio. We'll turn the camera back off and move on here. You'll notice also I have these two uh, cold shoe mounts. Obviously the one that comes with the camera I have bolted here. If I needed to slot like another receiver for like corporate interviews or whatever I could. And then I have this one in the back. I think this was by Lock Circle. It's a company over in Italy that I used to run their products back in the day. Um, and I just had an extra one of these and bolted it back here. So I just have extra spots to mount things like Teradex or extra receivers. I also have this little bubble mount by wooden camera right here. This little bubble mount is just a tiny little quarter 20 bu bubble that I have bolted into the top plate. You might ask why, because there's a level on the camera, but the level only shows you left and right. It doesn't show you if the camera is perpendicular. Even if you have the tripod perfectly balanced, if you're filming an interview, your tripod can be balanced, but the tilt of the tripod could be forward or backward, obviously, because you could, I mean, that's what you do with a tripod. You can, um, obviously, you can, you can tilt it up or down. And if you want to have straight lines, like let's say you're filming an interview and you want straight lines, you, you might not be able to know, hey, is the, is the tilt straight or not? Because the level in screen only tells you if it's level left or right. So this bubble helps me to see whether I'm perfectly level or not by just looking at the bubble. And that tells me if my tilt is off, which is what I use that for. Anyway, um, we'll move on to this side of the camera. You'll notice I run the Alistair Chapman style um, uh, shotgun mic holder. Um, he, this I really like. It's a great design. It's really robust. I actually ran something similar in the FS7 that I came up with years ago, but then Alistair came up with this with the FX6. I like this a lot. Um, it's a lot stronger mount than the one that comes with the camera, and I also find it has a lot less handling noise. So I run a uh, Sennheiser MKH 8060 shotgun mic, and I also run the uh, low cut filter switch, so it gives the mic enough length where it comes all the way through this uh, shotgun mic holder because of that extra um, uh, low cut filter, which is, you know, the 8060 is a modular design, so you can add that low cut filter in. It gives the mic some length, so I can run the plug in the back. These are right angle plugs. I love these um, low profile plugs. And that, that allows me to run a full size shotgun mic. And I specifically have the short haired version of the uh, Rycote windscreen because the short haired version allows me to run a 16 to 35. I'm running the 1635 G Master version 2 to film this right now. If I was running that on this, even with the even with this mic sticking way out front, at 16 millimeters, because I'm using the short haired version of this windscreen, I'm not gonna get the mic in the shot. So even at 16 mil, it's clear. If it was wider than 16, like a 12 mil Leoa uh, zero distortion cine lens, you would see it. But at 16 to 35, like typically that 16 is the widest I'm ever gonna go you're not gonna see the shotgun mic. And you get great sound from this 8060. And with the low cut filter turned on, you have uh, between the low cut filter and this shock mount, this aftermarket strong shock mount that is rubber band design, you have essentially no handling noise at all whatsoever. Um, and then I have these little Peak Design anchors. I do run Peak Design straps that really thick, like the heaviest one. I think it's like the Slide or Slide Pro or something like that. I run that um, on this camera for when I'm like, hiking or doing events or anything where I just want to film and then drop the camera and have it hang on my side. Uh, so that's what I have this Peak Design Anchors for. And I think that's probably about it. I, I also will say one last thing. I have these cables were all custom made. Now the one, this is a stock Sony cable, the one that I have the receiver on. Um, it's a good length, so it's fine. I have it ran up here and tied in with everything else. But the Tentacle Sync time code cable, the two pin limo to deep tap, and even this SDI cable. I all had them custom made overseas from a company called Alvin's Cables. I've had them build me, I mean, gosh, they've probably built me 50 cables over the years. I love Alvin's Cables. Um, they're not in the US, I'm in the US, they're overseas, but they make them really fast. I'll get them within a week or two. Um, and so I have had all these cables custom made so I can have the angles I want, 
um, whether straight or right angle. I can have the exact length I want, everything. So all my cables have been custom made by Alvin Cables to fit the exact lengths and sizes that I need for my setup and system. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's it. I, don't, I, mean, I run the stock grip, the stock, stock handle. Um, the configuration is really lightweight. I mean, even if I threw the matte box on and the heaviest V-mount battery on the back, it's and this dual wireless receiver it's still very very lightweight and on the easy rig i can shoot all day long so what i love about this system is it's not overly complicated i can take the v-mount off power the whole thing as is slap a v-mount on increase the battery life from 50 to 100 percent depending on the battery size i can run up to four channels of audio three wireless and a gun mic or four wireless total and uh, I like the Sony G Master lenses with this because you get great autofocus. Um, and then of course you have the ability on pretty much all their newer lenses to have the external aperture ring so you can pull your iris in real time. I just think this whole system for the type of work I do is amazing. And what I love about Sony, right, is I have the FX6, I have the FX3, we could bring an FX9 in. There's a local rental house, I can rent an FX9 for like 150 bucks a day, it's super cheap. Um, and then of course, if you're on a commercial project and you need something bigger, you can rent the Venice or Venice 2 or now even the Burano. And, and this will be a great V cam for that. So I love the Sony system all the way from the highest end, uh, you know, for if you're doing a commercial shoot and you need the Venice, Venice 2 or Burano, down to cameras like the FX6, FX3. I think it's just a complete system. I am a huge Sony fan, I've been shooting with them for 12, 13 years, and I really, really like the FX6, and I love the way I have it configured. I've had this camera for three years now, and I'm pretty positive I'll have it for three or four more, um, maybe even longer, because it does everything I need it to do. I, I personally don't have a need to upgrade from this. I can't think of anything at the moment that I, I just have to have. I mean, of course it'd be great if it had Super 35 4K, or if it could do 240 frames, although I don't shoot a lot of slow motion, but if I did, it'd be cool to have 240 frames of 4K, or, or even higher resolution options. But the reality is, is that this camera, for the work I do, which is what I explained earlier in the video, it's pretty much perfect. I'm a huge fan, and this is how I have it set up. If you have any questions, let me know, um, and I'll put links to the parts in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas, and I look forward to seeing you all in the new year.